affliction, maybe underneath level number six where there is uh, e uh, viruses and E. coli and things like that. But again, the produce and the productivity is decreased, it, it's afflicted, things go bad, things don't have to go bad. God could step in and correct it. But because, again, we don't see the response that God is asking of us, these things continue to be allowed. And more in, in headlines, and more in assaults, and more in afflictions of these. But again, because we don't see this, we don't recognize the scriptures, and we put it in our references to say, well, that's the God of the Old Testament. And we don't see it happening in our day and age, and there's a disconnect on all of this. Now I want to conclude on this. I want to come to a finish up on this. And I want us to go back to a, a horrible chapter in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. And it is the, the chapter of blessings and curses. And Moses is giving his last words, his last testimony uh, to the children of Israel to plead with them to say, Obey the word of the Lord. Follow the Lord. Don't turn away because if you turn away, this is what's going to happen to you. Cause, effect. Now this is Moses getting ready to go up and to draw his last breath and be removed from the earth. What would you say to your loved ones, knowing all these things now, seeing it now, what would you say to your loved ones if he was on your deathbed tonight? How would you respond to your family, your children? Fear the word of the Lord. Serve God with all your heart. Get back to God. When you can't see God's judgments on those that are nearest to you and those things of external, external things happening around you, you are as blind as all this that we've been talking about. But a response from God causes us to say, okay, Lord, I get it. And you confess, repent, and restore the relationship. That's what is needed. These last words of Moses in chapter 28 are so heavy upon the church today. Old Testament, Old Testament. It's, it's the word of God, and we need it. We've got to understand that. We've got to apply this. We've got to see that this land that we love so much and all of God's beauty and His creation is being assaulted and afflicted to get our eyes open, to get our hearts changed, to get the sin out and to let holiness prevail. Without an understanding of this, we are finished and doomed. And not just us, but our children and our grandchildren and those that we love. It is necessary and needful to put all this together for a proper response. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3 through 14, Moses says, Blessed are the people. Blessed is the individual. Blessed is the family. Blessed are the people of God that hear and obey and do the word of the Lord. Blessings. And he covers everything there. You can read down through those blessings and you can see every aspect of life is found in those blessings. Now, verse 3 through 14, that, that's only 11 verses. The curses for those who don't obey, who those who don't fear, to those who don't listen, that goes from verse 15 clear over to the end of the chapter where God says, I'll just keep Mirrors the, mirrors the scripture in Leviticus that we opened up with. And he says, if you don't listen to me, this is how severe it's going to get. So I want to give you, for our study here tonight, uh, level number three, the, the judgment on the land. I want to show you in this curses, these verses, and he answers himself in about three verses to say, why is this happening? And he uses the word because. And when he says because, he defines why. Why is this happening? Because they would not obey. Because they would not follow. Because they would not listen. Response. So, 
Starting in chapter 28, the curses begin in verse 15. But if that it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, not listen to the voice of the Lord God, will not observe to, to do disobedience, all of his commandments, his statutes, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. So they're not just here to afflict us. They're here to overtake us and to consume us. So we begin. 16, 17, and 18 of the curses. And it is again external. It's not knock us right in the nose, right between our eyes, get our attention, set us up on edge. It, it's external things to see that he's doing this and allowing this and causing this so that we don't have to get to where he's assaulting us. Oh, that we had a mind to get this, grasp this, and change it tonight. 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, cursed shall you be in the field. Now we go back to Genesis. He cursed the land, he cursed the ground. And God can bless the ground, garden, garden of Eden, God can bless the ground, promised land, milk of honey, crops, productivity, fruitfulness, all that, or he can curse it. And we're under a curse right now because we just lost all of our corn and crops. 17. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. And I always, I always read that. Of course, I always think about that old little nursery rhyme. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. What good does a basket do if it's got a hole in it? And what good does our store do if we're like old Mother Hubbard's cover to our bear? Curse the basket, curse the store. Verse 18, curse it shall be the fruit of your body. That's our productivity of life and birth and the fruit of your land. The increase of your cows and the flocks of your sheep. Our livestock and the fruitfulness of the land is cursed. Verse 20, definition. This shall all be upon you, the cursing, vexation, rebuke, because of the wickedness of your doings. You cannot see the sin in our nation, see the sin on our televisions, see the sin in our homes, see the sin in the church, see the sin in your own heart, which we identified in, in level number one. Sin. I have sinned. We have sinned. They have sinned. Response. Because. Of that wickedness, these things have happened. Verse 22, he says, I'll send the mildew. Now you know, if you've ever had to deal with this, maybe you haven't, but mildew, it, it is a sore. It, it's not so much afflicting us per se, but again, it's not something overnight. Moisture gets underneath the ground. Uh, mildew starts to happen, starts to take place. Flooding and those kind of things that happens, it just destroys with mildew. Doesn't bother you at that particular time because you can correct it. But left gets in the lungs, respiratory problems, mildew, which causes that life threatening escalation. Verse 23, flooding causes mildew, those kind of things. Verse 23, we've seen this already repeatedly. Heaven is brass and the iron is earth, dust. Verse 27, uh, the Lord will smite you with a botch of Egypt, that's pestilence, emeralds, scab, itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. It rises these things up, and we see this, and we'll see more of it in uh, level number 6, uh, afflictions on our flesh. Uh, verse 33, fruit of your land again. It, you make the product, you, you do the crops, but you don't get to enjoy it. Those that take us from captivity will take our food from us so that we'll never get to enjoy that which we've labored over. Verse 38, you go out and put much seed into the ground, but you shall bring in little, and locusts shall come to consume your product. Verse 39, you can get your vineyards, and your grapes will be the best, and you'll be ready to make wine and jelly and all that good stuff, but I'll send the worms, and they'll eat it from the inside out. So you get to see the beauty of it, but you never get to enjoy it. Is that worse? Which is worse? Laboring over something, saying those are the best plants I've ever seen, that's the best my garden's ever looked, 
And all of a sudden, in one night, destruction comes and it's gone. You saw it, but you never got to enjoy it. Or to have drought and famine and fire, and, and it just consumes it, and you never even got to get off the ground with it. Maybe you don't miss it so much, but needless to say, it's gone. Uh, 38 is the seeds, locust eats it, 39 is the vineyards, the worms eat it, 40 the olive trees and the olive gardens and those things uh, are afflicted and removed and it's gone. Verse 45, verse 62, again it's that same message. Why is this happening? Because, verse 45, you did not hearken to the voice of the Lord God to obey and keep his commandments which he commanded you. Verse 65, 62, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord, and destruction comes. Now again, external. It happens to the nature. It happens in all these disasters that I've given you references to in the scripture. It's happening to us today. Where's the call? Where's the recognition? We have not obeyed the word of the Lord. We haven't obeyed the word of the Lord because we don't even read the word of the Lord. We don't memorize the word of a hit of my heart. We don't study to show ourselves approved. And therefore men continue in their sins, provoking God. And the response is not there. And we go from level number three to level number four to level number five to level number six. You see the judgments unfolding in Scripture, just as God said, consistent. From Genesis to Revelation, this is the same God that's judging our nation and our land right now in front of our eyes. We are in the, in the midst of a fall season. And it is now that you begin to look. What's this winter going to look like? What's next spring going to look like? We see these things happening. Where's the response of the church? What about your life? What about your increase? What about your fruitfulness? What about your cupboards at home? What happens if the government collapses? What happens if the economy collapses? What happens if the church is shut down and the doors are, are nailed fast and those of Christian leadership are arrested and put into prison like other nations around the world? What's your response then? Somebody in ignorance will lift up their voice. How do we ever get here? Why is this happening? See, they didn't see. And they didn't respond. Deuteronomy, Leviticus, four warnings. When these things happen, this is why you and I, to understand these things, I've got to respond personally. We've got to respond corporately. And then we've got to go tell them God's not going to put up with sin in this nation. You gotta go back to your families and sit down with your loved ones and tell them God's not gonna put up with this anymore. Warning of judgments is to get a clear message in the mind, in the heart, in the life, so that we don't have to go to the next level. Now we're playing catch up. Some of you sitting here, uh, this is the first time you've ever heard this. I presented this and, and people have looked at me like I walked off of Mars. This has always been. It's just that it's not being pre preached and declared to the people. And they're sitting in ignorance. So you are now without excuse because you heard and you know. Now what are you going to do about it? Proper response to the things of God in this day and this time. Let us have moments now as we go into in this time of reflection. What the Spirit's been saying to you during this, these, this last hour. And what He wants to do in you and in me. And as we continue to look at the rest of these judgments in, in our future meetings. To get ready. To get the people ready. God's waiting for a proper response from all of us. May He find it as we begin tonight in this invitation to seek His face. To call upon His name. To humble ourselves. And to ask for forgiveness for such wickedness.